Do you have a child with ADHD? Do you want more peace, less hyperactivity, less defiance and, and more joy in your life? If this is something you'd love to see, then stick around with me because in the next few minutes, I am going to share three specific strategies you can put into place today, today to start seeing changes sometimes within as little as 30 days. So before we get started, I want to remind you to go ahead and click that subscribe button right now. I'll wait, push pause and go ahead and click it now. Hopefully you subscribe because you don't want to miss out on any upcoming videos from me. Now, allow me to quickly introduce myself. If you don't already know me, my name is Dana Kay and I'm a board certified holistic health and nutrition practitioner. And I am the creator of the ADHD Thrive Method for Kids, which is a program that helps kids with ADHD reduce their symptoms naturally using natural strategies. Now, I work with families all across the USA. I know I don't sound like I'm from the USA. I'm originally from Australia, but I live in Seattle, Washington, and I teach them what they can do to reduce inflammation in their child's body, brain, and gut, what foods to eliminate, what foods to eat more of, and what else they can do to help support their child naturally. So let's dive in. Three strategies to put into place today to start seeing improvements in the behavior of your child with ADHD. Number one, get rid of the top inflammatory foods, naming gluten, dairy, and soy. Gluten is the number one food I recommend all children with ADHD cut out of their diets. In fact, gluten is so highly inflammatory that I suggest everyone, even those without ADHD or a known gluten intolerance, stop eating it plain and simple. It is harmful for everyone. And that's because gluten triggers increased intestinal permeability in everyone, even those who don't show an allergic response to it. Now, intestinal permeability refers to the breakdown of the intestinal walls. Now, when functioning properly, the walls of the intestine form a barrier, allowing water and nutrients to pass through, but also blocking other things from entering the bloodstream. Now, when a person has intestinal uh, permeability, that can lead to something called leaky gut. And leaky gut allows toxins and other harmful substances to enter the bloodstream that aren't supposed to be there. And that leads to an inflammatory response in the body. Now, this inflammation can make ADHD symptoms significantly worse. Inflammation isn't the only issue with gluten though. Gluten also has the potential to create opiate-like effects in some individuals. It's crazy, literally crazy you know, opiates. Uh, in individuals who have gut inflammation, which is very common in kids with ADHD, their enzymes in their guts are not fully breaking down gluten. And what happens as a result are compounds called glutamorphins. And the protein structure of glutamorphins is similar to that of morphine. So it sounds similar as well, glutamorphins, morphine. Now, glutamorphins are absorbed into the bloodstream they cross the blood-brain barrier, and then they bind to opiate receptors in the brain and the gastrointestinal tract. Now think about people who are addicted to morphine. They might be unable to sit still. They could have massive meltdowns over small things. They might be unable to handle transitions. In many ways, they have ADHD-like symptoms. When Parents of children with ADHD remove gluten and thus remove the opiate glutamorphin, these opiate-like instances begin to be fewer and farther in between. Now, when we remove gluten from my son's diet, he became a completely different child, literally within two weeks, calm, focused, able to sit still. And one thing to keep in mind when removing gluten is that some people go through a glutamorphin withdrawal response. Think of this like a detox period. During this period, their ADHD symptoms might actually get worse for a time before they get better. And that's because their bodies are flushing out the gluten. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that it can take sometimes three to even six months for gluten to stop reacting in the body. So don't give up if you don't see results immediately. Sometimes it can take a few months before the body fully reduces the inflammation that was caused by gluten. 
Oh, that was a lot. Okay, so let's move on to dairy. I suggest families cut out dairy for the same reasons as they cut out gluten. Dairy products like gluten are inflammatory and create opioid-like responses in the brain. The opioid-like protein in dairy is called casomorphin. Soy is the third food children with ADHD should cut out from their diets. And there are two primary reasons for this. So first of all, approximately 95% of soy products come from genetically modified crops so or GMOs. Now, GMOs are linked to many health problems. They damage the digestive system and kill off the good bacteria in your gut. Now, because most of the soy in foods today comes from GMO plants, it's best to cut out soy out of the diet altogether. The overproduction of soy is also a problem. Soy is among the largest United States farm commodities. It's heavily processed, it has a high yield, and often contains glyphosate, which is a pesticide. And because of its mass production, it is also snuck into a variety of foods at an alarming rate. Now, the second reason I suggest families of children with ADHD remove soy is because soy is an endocrine disruptor. When eaten in excess, it can have adverse effects on the balance of hormones in your body. It also uh, contains isoflavones, which act like estrogen in the body. So since many uh, breast cancers uh, need estrogen to grow, eating an excess of soy could increase the risk of breast cancer. Now, I know that was a lot of information, so I want to offer a couple of additional resources to help. First of all, I actually have a free webinar where I explain this topic even more. If you'd like to watch that, check out the video description below and I'll include that link right there so it's easy for you to find. And secondly, if you feel like you need additional support with removing these foods, say you have a picky eater and you have no idea how to get them off gluten, dairy and soy, then I want to offer the opportunity to book a free call with me or my team uh, and I'll pop the link to that in the video below as well. Now, the second strategy is cut back on sugar and toss food that contains artificial food dyes and flavours. Many parents overlook the importance of blood sugar management because they think of it in connection with diabetes, not ADHD. But blood sugar management is important for all of us, whether we have diabetes or not. Now, unstable blood sugar contributes to a whole host of problems. Now, just listen to this list of symptoms for hyperglycemia, which is low blood sugar, and think about how similar they are to ADHD symptoms. Difficulty listening inability to focus or stay on task, being easily distracted, quick to get frustrated and sometimes hard to calm down, unexpected anger and or lashing out and unable to sit still. Now, when my son was really struggling with his ADHD symptoms, he had every one of those symptoms in excess. Now, the ADHD symptoms many children battle with can be tied directly to fluctuating blood sugar. I read about a study recently that concluded that the more sugar hyperactive children consumed, the more destructive and restless they became. Children with ADHD do not need another thing to make them more impulsive. They battle it enough uh, without you know, sugar heaping on additional challenges. The American Heart Association recommends kids aged between 2 and 18 should have less than 25 grams of or six teaspoons of added sugar daily. However, in my experience, working with children with ADHD, this amount should be cut in half. Parents should aim to have less than 12 grams of sugar or three teaspoons of added sugar daily. And this does not include natural sugars found in fruits and vegetables. If you stick within your daily uh, ratios of like two to three pieces of fruit a day or five to seven pieces of vegetables a day, then they don't get added onto that total. What can be tricky is that sugar can be called so many different things in food. Some code words for sugar include things like lactose, maltose, dextrose, glucose, xylose, saccharose, sucrose, corn sweetener, corn syrup, corn syrup solids, dehydrated cane juice, 
dextrin, maltodextrin, malt syrup, molasses, rice syrup, sorghum or sorghum syrup. One clue that helps me remember these names is that many of them end in O-S-E or O-S. Now, when looking at ingredient labels, look for those O-S words and avoid them as much as possible. The less you and your family eat, the healthier you will be. But also focus on natural sugars instead of refined sugars. So things like honey, maple syrup, and dates, they're much, much better for you. Now, let's briefly talk about artificial colors. This one gets me a little bit angry. Did you know there are chemicals allowed into food in the United States that are banned either partially or entirely in other countries? Some of these banned chemicals are artificial colors like red number 40, red number six, uh, yellow number six, yellow number five. Um, Stick with me for the next few minutes as I'm going to explain why artificial food colorings are so bad for us and in particular why they are so bad for children with ADHD. So Attitude Magazine recently released an updated article about the effects of artificial colors on ADHD and it said this, food additives adversely affect a population of children with ADHD. They went on to share two studies from the United Kingdom that proved food additives cause harm to children with ADHD. Now I'm quoting uh, their results here. In 2004, one studied healthy preschoolers after giving them either a placebo or 20 milligrams of artificial dye mix plus sodium benzoate. They found that when the children received the actual dye and sodium benzoate, they had significant increase in hyperactivity. A significant increase in hyperactivity. Now, as a mom of a child with ADHD, I don't need anything that is going to give my son a significant increase in hyperactivity. And my guess is other parents of children with ADHD can totally relate. Here's what they found in the second study. In 2007, a research team led by UK researcher Donna McCann studied a group of three-year-olds and eight or nine-year-olds. It found that both hyperactive children and non-hyperactive children experienced increased hyperactivity scores when given artificial food colors and additives, suggesting that dyes are a general public health concern. Did you catch the results of that one? It wasn't only children with ADHD who were more hyperactive after eating artificial colors. It was neurotypical children as well. What that tells me is that everyone is negatively affected by artificial colors. They are bad for all of us. A general public health concern. In 2010, the European Union began requiring a warning label for foods that contain artificial coloring. The warning says may have adverse effects on activity and attention in children, okay? But in the US, that specific warning label is nowhere to be seen. And as a result, consumers are left completely in the dark about how artificial colors can negatively affect their children. Even though those studies showed a significant correlation between artificial colors and hyperactivity, they still refuse to add the clear warning labels. Another thing that's crazy is that people can eat the same type of food in both Britain and the USA and eat very different ingredients. Companies actually use different formulas for American consumers than for those outside of the USA. In Britain, food is made with real ingredients, like actual food. But in America, Chemicals are added to food with no warning label at all. This needs to change, okay? Consumers in America should be offered the same ingredients as those outside of the US rather than their chemical counterparts. And when chemicals are added to food, consumers need to know about it. We should know what we're eating. Sorry, I'm totally going on a rant here. It's seriously so baffling to me that the United States continues to allow ingredients into their food supply that are not even food. It's no wonder we have so many staggering health issues. We are feeding our body things that 
aren't meant to be food. Thankfully, things are beginning to change, but not fast enough in my opinion. Several companies like Hershey's, Kraft and Taco Bell have made changes in their product lines to get rid of artificial colours. But unfortunately, there are still many companies that refuse to remove artificial colours from their formulas. You and I can help make this happen by changing the way we eat. Companies may not listen to our voices, but they will listen to our money. If enough of us refuse to buy products that contain artificial food coloring, they will be forced to make a change. You and I can help make this happen. Let's start today by reading those labels and cutting items from our shopping list if they contain artificial colors. One concern that I hear a lot when encouraging families to change the way they eat is that parents fear their kids will miss out on their childhood. But that doesn't have to be the case at all. There are plenty of healthier alternatives and treats that don't contain artificial colors. One of our favorite candy brands are things like Yum Earth and Enjoy Life. Okay, after that rant, we're finally onto the third strategy. Replace these inflammatory foods with nutrient-dense whole fruits and veggies, healthy fats, and grass-fed protein sources. It's not just about what you take out of the diet, but also what you put back in. So focus your attention on whole fruits and veggies, healthy fats like avocado, coconut, and olive oils, grass-fed animal protein, uh, such as meat, poultry, seafood, eggs, And there you have it, guys. That's it. Three specific strategies you can begin implementing today that can make massive changes. I see seriously massive changes for your child with ADHD and your entire family. If you need any help doing these things, send me a message, drop me a comment below. You can contact me through any of the methods described in the video description below, but I'm always happy to help. Bye for now.